Welcome to the first episode of Mirror Talk. This show was inspired by something I heard in high school. You, you can stand around wondering what people think of you, or you can take a good, lo- long, hard look in the mirror, and if you like what you see, that should be enough. Before we get started today, I would like to read a quote from none other than Chris Redfield. More and more I find myself wondering if it's all worth fighting for, for a future without fear. Yeah. It's worth it. With that being said, I will let my special guest introduce himself. Yes, hello. I'm Raphael. Uh, I guess some of you may know me from the P-Cubed YouTube channel on which I do all sorts of content there. And I'm also the host and GM of Resident Roleplay, which I guess we're going to be talking about a bit today. So, for people that don't exactly know what uh, Resident Roleplay is, if you wouldn't mind, uh, just going into it a little bit in your own words of what Resident Roll Play is and where you can find it. Yeah, yeah. So just like for if anybody doesn't know uh, or isn't familiar with the show, it's basically a uh, tabletop role-playing game series that is basically themed after the Resident Evil video game franchise. So uh, it uses, um, for those of you who are familiar with Dungeons & Dragons, it's like a, uh, uses like 5th edition rules, but uh, vastly homebrewed in order to fit in Resident Evil as a setting. And so I've been GMing for that, and uh, that's been going on like almost the past two years now. And yeah, that's pretty much the, the show in a nutshell. We live stream it, and then we upload all the VODs to YouTube. So whenever, because uh, we kind of operate in seasons almost, uh, where we only... We live stream it every week while it's in season, which is basically each season is like a story arc. So while a story arc is in session, uh, we live stream it every Saturday evening on twitch.tv slash P underscore squared. Uh, and then on uh, the Mondays after each live stream, we upload it to YouTube, uh, which you could uh, find at youtube.com slash c slash pack pro pro that's pack like pac-man pro like professional uh pack pro pro <laughs> and then once of course story arcs are over we uh take a little bit of a break sometimes like around a month or so and then usually return afterwards uh so now that everybody knows what resident roleplay is and where we can find it on the interwebs uh links will be down below so uh feel free to look at those in your free time um but to continue we i'll be asking uh raf some fun questions to dive into just a little bit more of maybe the psychology and how he feels about running a game like resident roleplay so the first question is what is your favorite story arc so far and why was it your favorite Oh man, that's a tough question. <laughs> uh, I mean, it's hard to pick favorites, especially, you know, as a as an artist, as a storyteller, it's really hard to pick favorites. But, I mean, obviously, over time, I think naturally you tend to favor the newer stuff because over time you just get better at it. You get better at, you know, in this case, like I get better at running the game or anything like that. Because this was technically the first campaign. This is the first long form role-playing game campaign I've ever run. Uh, so <laughs> there was definitely a lot of learning that needed to be done at first. But, you know, I've been kind of... I've been looking back at some of the earlier... Uh, some of the earlier arcs, and, you know, they, those all had, like, their own little charm to it, I feel, you know, where I was newer, so the running of the game was a bit iffy, but at the same time, it was looser, and I feel like everyone was having fun, and the story was just like gut, just getting started and people were getting into it. And then as time went on, uh, I think I improved greatly at running the game. But, you know, at some points maybe got a little bit more formulaic or other sorts of things that I think were, were, weren't were necessarily helpful to the campaign. But at the same time, it led to some pretty great moments here and there. Uh, so, yeah, again, it's really hard to pick a favorite, uh, particularly from among all of the all of the arcs if anything 
I, if anything, I, I like I said, the I always feel like I favor the newest thing. And right now, I think honestly, the arc that we're currently in has been my favorite so far. Like that, there have been plenty of awesome moments. Like it feels like we're just getting into it, and there's still been a bunch of awesome big narrative moments that have been planned for a very long time. And I feel like all of them went off better than I expected them to. Uh, both with you know how the players enjoyed them and how I was able to run them. So yeah, honestly, I think this current arc. Uh, which I'm kind of loosely titling uh, The Gathering uh, because of some of the, the the overarching plot that's going on in it. Uh, yeah, I think this one might be my favorite so far. Awesome. So if you hate favorite questions, then this next one might be a little hard for you. <laughs> so if you had to pick a player character that has that you think has come the furthest, who would it be and why? Okay, that's not necessarily, I guess, a favorites question, so that might be a bit easier. Um, honestly, I, I think there's there's a definitive answer to this question. Um, or rather, where was the question, which player character or which player? Okay, character. Okay, yeah. Um, well, I might answer both questions anyway, because I like that. Because, <laughs> like, yeah, I think the character that I think that has come the farthest would be oh, probably Emil, just because he's changed so drastically since the beginning of the campaign. He started out as one sort of character, where he was like what I would consider the moral center of the party, and then just had such a hard fall from there. So I feel like that character changed a lot, and, you know, obviously I have lots of conversations with the players talking about, you know, their character's mindset, and we talked a great deal about just the mule's psychology and how he went from being, you know, just a very archetypical good man to being, you know, somebody that can do uh, what he has done in these recent uh, arcs of the story. I'm not sure uh, if I want to talk too much spoilers on this or if, if this is intended to be a spoiler talk, but yeah. So I think that character has changed a great deal in that regard, but um, as among the players, among the cast, uh, I think our friend Doc, or Super Salty Peanut, as many people know him as, uh, I think he has definitely grown a lot over the course of this. And we had this, I think, in a... We went over this a little bit in a recent private conversation, but we were like... or No, this might have been on the last stream while, while we were at the midpoint break. We talked about this a bit, where I was pointing out, like, because he probably has the least experience with tabletop out of everybody in the group. And... So he was, you know, and he he could be like a kind of like, I guess, one track guy <laughs> sometimes in a lot of ways where he feels like he makes similar sorts of characters. But I was really surprised over the course of this campaign with how he really took to the role play, where how he really took to Chauncey as a character. And like, I wasn't expecting that much role play from him at the outset of the campaign. He was just going to be like, oh, yeah, I'm the tanky damage dealer and part time comic relief. Uh, but I feel like him as a player and Chauncey with him has kind of evolved to being so much more than that. And it's been really interesting to see that journey and see Doc uh, grow as a role player and, you know, as, as just a player player as well, you know, learning the mechanics and the way the sy system works. And he put a lot of work into making sure, he, you know, he knows how to run his character and making sure he's prepared in each appearance. So, yeah, so I gave you a kind of two for answer there. So, uh, the next question kind of goes back to Resident Evil, or Resident Evil Play's roots, which was um, that the campaign was just supposed to be me and, and Lauren. Um, how do you think the campaign would have changed if it would have just been me and Lauren? Yeah, I mean, that would have been very significantly different. I don't know if there's much... I don't know if we've gone on the record talking about that a lot. I think we have a couple of times, but yeah, I think that's a bit of a little known fact um, that this campaign was just going to be you and Lauren at first playing Arkea and Emil. Um, all of the other, the rest of the party, you know, with Mel as Katara and uh, Doc as Chauncey, that all happened very last minute. That was all, like, both of them signed on in, like, the one or two weeks leading up to the start of the campaign. So that was kind of interesting, but 
obviously they were very welcome additions and I loved having a larger party to work with. But that being said, again, that would have been a very drastically different campaign. It certainly would have been a lot more intimate, I think, is the main trait that that would have had because when you're dealing with either a solo campaign or just two player characters, that changes the whole dynamic, you know, that changes the types of encounters you can design, that changes the, it definitely funnels the kind of stories you can tell, at the very least. So, yeah, that campaign, I think, would have been a lot more intimate, it would have been a lot more geared and focused toward those two characters, and it would have specifically revolved around them um, in... A sort of, I guess what writers would call like a clockwork universe. Uh, that is a, a world in which basically the entire world is designed to reflect the characters or be a foil to the specific characters and reveal elements of them. To a certain extent, all RPG campaigns are clockwork universes just because you want to make them player centric and make the player characters feel or players feel like their characters are important. So th there is that to a certain extent still, but it would have been a lot more of that. It would have been very specifically geared to those characters and probably a bit of a smaller scale story, I think, overall. But I love that we managed to have a full party of four, though, because that really expanded the possibilities and gave me the chance to, I guess, run it in a more traditional manner where I could have big battles and, you know, all these dangerous encounters with enemies that are really, you know, powerful and do lots of damage, or just lots of enemies in some cases. So, yeah, I've, lo I've loved having the party that we have, but yeah, it would have been way different if it was just two characters. So, um, really quick, this will be a quote-unquote spoilery question. Um, since we now know that it was supposed to be me and Lauren in the beginning, um, do you think that Archaea um, would have died by the hands of Emil if it would have just been Archaea and Emil um, in the story? without the the other characters coming in. Yeah. Um hmm. That's an excellent question. I don't I don't think it necessarily would have gone that way. I think it was the specific events of this campaign as it happened that kind of led Lauren to wanting to bring Emil down that path. Uh I don't know. I mean I can't I can't speak for Lauren, but uh but yeah, I feel I feel like he was more comfortable with taking that path, knowing that there was a larger party that would still be able to go on. Uh, and I feel like he would have been more hesitant to do that sort of thing with if it was just the two of you, right? That Because that would have just been, like, campaign over, essentially, <laughs> you know, so... Yeah, I, 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 don't, I don't think it would have necessarily happened that way, especially because, you know, in the, I guess the original design, it was just going to be your two characters, so Emil was going to be a lot closer with Archaea. I mean, he still was close with Archaea, but he was going to be basically her father figure, and ultimately probably would have ended up adopting her once you guys got out of Raccoon City. But Chauncey ended up taking on that role, which was a welcome surprise. So, yeah, I feel like... I feel like he would have been a lot closer and a lot more, uh, a lot more caring with Archaea and a lot more hesitant to do anything so extreme as he did if it were just the campaign about the two of you. Because um, Lauren, Lauren's interesting because there are different. I guess GMs talk about this often: the different types of players, right? There are all sorts of different types of players. There's some people that are just looking to kill stuff and get paid. Some people are min-maxing their builds. Some people just want to get really deep into the world, into the role play. Uh, and of the, all the types of character of players, Lauren often tells me that he considers himself a GM's PC. Not necessarily a GM PC, which is where, like, a GM has their own player character that's in the campaign, but rather, he is the player character who takes on the, I guess, the burden of trying to make things smooth, go smoothly for the GM, and trying to, like, not necessarily run with their plan, but do what they, as a GM, would know <laughs> is kind of beneficial for the progress of the story. So... 
with with that being said, I think that's sort of Lauren's whole motivation is make sure things are interesting but in line with making the game run smoothly. So I definitely don't think he would have done that if it was a meal would have gone down that path if it was just a meal in Arkea. But since there was more people, he felt the freedom to be a little bit more flexible with the kind of stories he could tell with his character. Awesome. Um, I didn't get half of that conversation because my internet cut out. Oh, no. <laughs> but I'll hear it on the recording. Um, so, okay. So we talked about that. Um, just a really quick, uh, I guess it's because we're talking about a meal in Arkea, and mm. I just want to reiterate that <laughs> that scene, um, a little behind the scenes of that, that scene where Emil literally plunged the knife into her chest. Mm -hmm. um, so we are doing spoiler talk. <laughs> a little bit. Yeah, yeah. All right. Spoiler, um, spoiler talk. But this is this is for people that have seen it. Um, behind the scenes, um, Lauren messaged me during that scene. And he's like, you want me to back off? I'm like... No, <laughs> because I feel that if I would have said yes, that and tried to preserve Arkea, I believe that it would have ruined the um, the flow of the scene. Yeah. And and ruin, you know, ruin the scene in general. So I didn't want to be selfish <laughs> again <laughs> um, and be like, yeah, I need to preserve Arkea for the for the fact that um Aiden may show up at some <laughs> point in the future. Wow. Um, yeah, yeah. Which, I've... Oh, sorry. Which is a whole another talk we'll have in a bit. <laughs> but um <laughs> but yeah, I just I'm like I can't I can't preserve her for that that instance or the instance of getting revenge. Because yeah. honestly, there's this thing where at least for me, when I'm playing a character, there's Lisa's brain, and then there's the character's brain. And <laughs> sometimes they don't coincide very well. <laughs> like, my brain's like, I need to preserve her. She She's my character. I work so hard on her. You know, and all of this. And then there's Arkea's brain that's going, I'm cool with this. <laughs> I'm cool going out like this. I was trying to do what I needed to do, you know. <laughs> so, I died doing what I you know what i wanted to do <laughs> i mean but like yeah and i feel i for one feel like i've been really fortunate with my players because you know i hear a lot of horror stories from other gms you know of just like how difficult it could be to work with certain uh players and certain personality types yeah but it's just like i feel like I've gotten a player group that, for the most part, is kind of in line with what I want to do with this campaign, which is run something that's very, you know, roleplay and narrative heavy, um, while still having those traditional elements of just, you know, I guess dungeon crawling, as it were, and, uh, you know, an adventure, and having uh, basically traditional Resident Evil type scenarios of being stuck in uh, the same place for an extended period of time, but... Yeah, like, the fact that you had that chance to be able to say, you know, just completely, I guess, metagame to a certain extent in that that conversation was happening out of game, you know, you had that opportunity to, you know, say no or to, you know, tell them to ease off, but, you know, the fact that, I guess, you, you went with it and that you rolled with the punches of what the characters would have done in that scenario... I don't know, I found, I found that super admirable. And, um, you know, because I, 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 for one, would have liked to keep Arkea around as well. That would have been very helpful to the story. But at the same time, that's kind of the beauty of role-playing games, is you don't really have that control over the story. You know, the characters are going to do what they're going to do, the dice are going to fall where they may, and sometimes it just changes the entire course of the campaign. <laughs> and so you, uh, you as the, or I as the GM, have to have to figure out, okay, what does this mean for the world? What does this mean for the campaign? How do how do we proceed from here? And then it just becomes a whole narrative jigsaw puzzle that you got to figure out. But yeah, that's the beauty of RPGs, and that's why you play these kinds of games, is not to 
have control, but to relinquish that control in a way that you just get to let the story develop itself. But yeah, I feel like I've been really fortunate with my players. Your guys' commitment to some of the role-playing has been absolutely admirable, I think. Well, I'll take that as a compliment. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, if you watch, um, I guess... I guess not really. I mean, I was gonna say if you watch the the first little bit, you know, the first story where Arkea is in the story, um, you would know how you know how important she was to me, but you don't because <laughs> I played Arkea the exact opposite <laughs> of showing that she was important to me because she was always running into danger and and literally just throwing <laughs> yeah. herself into um into the hands of her captors ca ca uh <laughs> into the people that wanted to exploit her so <laughs> um but yeah. I, I mean i've had this talk with <laughs> raf and i've had this talk with um lauren as well because L lauren was a big part of i mean well emil was a big part of um who arkea was i guess um that she was a very important character um i guess if you knew that we had a role play me and Raph before this happened, um, before Resner Roleplay appeared, um, you would know other things, but I can't say anything about that because who knows if there's more spoilers. Um, <laughs> but uh <laughs> um so the next question is going to be now that we're talking about Archaea in the beginning of the story, um what um what was your favorite part about running um Aiden or the Beast? Oh yeah. So I mean Aiden has probably been one of my favorite NPCs to run because well, I guess you mentioned you touched on that a little bit just then where you're talking about the role play we did before Resident Roleplay happened. Um I guess that was that was how you and I got acquainted at first. Uh yeah, you just messaged me randomly one day. I think we had, like, a Discord server in common. I didn't know who you were. And you are just like, do you like to write? And I was like, you're darn right, I like to write. <laughs> and you were you were asking about doing some sort of uh, role play. And I was like, and I had engaged in, like, text-based role plays, you know, dabbled in it in my younger years. But, you know, I, it wasn't really something I'd done for a long time, so I was kind of hesitant. But I was like, sure, why not? Uh... But yeah, we got into that and we ended up doing like this Resident Evil because we both loved Resident Evil and that was how you found me. Uh, this Resident Evil sort of fan fiction text-based roleplay. Uh, and the character that I'd sort of created for that was Aiden. Uh, I mean, you gave me like a, a role, I guess. You know, you're like, yeah, the, I need, you know, there's this kind of character that you know, my, the character that I write for needs, and I was, uh, and you're just like, you think of somebody who would fit that role, and I came up with this big sort of story with Aiden. I guess I, I sort of discovered it as we went along, because that was kind of the nature of it, um, and I've elaborated on it over time, where I now have, you know, documents full of his backstory, but yeah, so that character was spawned for that text roleplay that you and I had at first, and then Resident Roleplay happened where we were like, okay, how about we expand this to a whole uh, game campaign and not just not just a roleplay, but a full-on game. And uh, yeah, and then I was like, okay. And then you were, you know, you brought in Arkea and I sort of had to figure out what happened to Aiden after our original roleplay and how do I tie him into the story of this campaign. Uh, but yeah, he was... He's quite an interesting one, and again, one of my one of my favorite NPCs just because of how personal a connection I have with him, of how long I guess this character has now been you know, been a been a been a part of me. He's old. Yeah, he's he's he is old. <laughs> yeah. He's getting old. Yeah, so it's like that that was very unique. I wouldn't consider him a GMPC by any means. Uh, because I don't, you know, mm -hmm. I don't have him regularly in the campaign. He still only pops up every once in a while. He's very, just a very major NPC. What a shame. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's a, just a very major NPC, but he's a, he's a fun one and an interesting one. And one that I've kind of gotten attached to more and more over time. So, yeah, that's, <laughs> that's, that's Aiden. In mm -hmm. a nutshell. <laughs> without spoiling. Yeah, without going too, 
too far into the uh, spoilers about that character. But I guess we had I one will... more arc that was kind of dedicated to him, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Literally called yeah, the they're Beast. Literally called the beast. <laughs> um. <clears throat> so, uh, just to touch a little bit on that, um, which is leading into my next question. Um, <clears throat> so, touching on my favorite NPC, because <laughs> uh, the next question is, what is your favorite NPC mm. and why? Um, but, t- t- touching on my favorite NPC real quick, it's gonna, it, it has to be Aiden. <laughs> because... Yeah, I figured. <laughs> it's... I guess I hate to play favorites, but um, if I had to pick an NPC, it would be Aiden. And the reason is, is because a little bit about what you said about the history and and everything. Oh yeah, that, for sure. You know, we. I mean, have, you you've you known know, him but... a lot longer than any other. Like you, Lisa, have <laughs> known him a lot longer than any other. Yeah, yeah, You yeah. know, character in this campaign. RK met him once, <laughs> <laughs> twice. Um, yeah, no, um, and, and my new character has never met No, yeah, your new character doesn't have Um, a clue. (laughs) Right? (laughs) Just like, who is that? Um, but, and a little bit about the history, you know, it's my, you know, like you said, he was written for my character in the role play, so it was like, we, mm, it was great. But being able to meet uh, being able to meet him and seeing how much he developed from the time that I knew him in the role play to now mm-hmm. <laughs> is crazy. Yeah, yeah. Like, I'm I w- I won't say Aiden's ever been c- cute and cuddly, but um, <laughs> uh, you know, he he changed from I guess it's a lot like Emil. Uh, he changed from you know, a somewhat good guy to just Yeah, crazy. just a murder machine. <laughs> <laughs> and yet, yeah, just kill everything. That, that was <laughs> that was a bit of a surprise to me. Or at least it wasn't really, I guess it wasn't that big of a surprise to me. Uh, but, you know, you expressed that you were like quite shocked with the, the state that they ended up finding, that you ended up finding Aiden in, in this campaign. Oh, yeah. And yeah, I, I guess I kind of wanted to go a little extreme with it because you know, looking back on the events of that role play, I'm like, this guy, there's no reason somebody's emotional well-being should survive the events that he went through. Right. right um, and not only that, he was an unstable person to begin with. Uh, but to begin with, yeah, yeah. Basically, he was a broken man. That's all I was trying to get across. Like, he broke. Right. And like, you, he, there was, yeah, did. there was no humanity left to it, of him, you know, after that. He was just the beast and that was that was fun to explore a, like i don't i don't i don't want to get well maybe this is this is what we're here yeah, for to no. get too deep right because <laughs> i don't i, I get, guess uh, i guess but uh because you know I, I i really only get to have like the deepest conversations with lauren because lauren and i spend so much time together we live together we mm. know each other so well and we have the shorthand where we could we just often delve into just deep conversations about the campaign and the characters and their psychology and their philosophies and things like that, that really only we care about, I think. But, uh, uh, they're siblings. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, with, with Aiden, because for me personally, just as a creator, for some reason, and this seems a bit strange, you know, especially with my particular background, you know, I'm a, I'm, I'm a Christian and oftentimes, you know, people sort of like conceive of that as being like very, I guess, uh, very optimistic sort of people. And I guess, you know, uh, the scripture does say, you know, light has no fellowship with darkness and things like that. So to a certain extent, yeah, there is that element of lightness. But for me personally, I feel like you can't really, you can't really define the light without having the dark. And so I've always kind of gravitated towards dark stories and dark characters and things like that. That's always kind of been my affinity i guess um and so i wanted to explore something really dark with aiden you know when i came to the time to the campaign i because like i said he was he was a broken man and i wanted to and and lauren knows this i took a lot of inspiration from uh the marvel netflix punisher series with how they portrayed frank castle in that um which was a very faithful portrayal of that character but also just like a very 
interesting performance from John Bernthal. And I kind of wanted to have some of that same attitude with Aiden, right? Where he's like this just like broken rage machine that just takes it just takes it out in violence, you know? It's like his violence is the only way he knows how to express himself. So, yeah, I really kind of wanted to explore some some dark psychology with Aiden of what what does that look like? You know, what does a a, a man who has his skill sets do when everything is taken from him? And, you know, I think he never quite fully recovered from that. Even when he found Archaea, it still, mm -hmm. you know, he was still, he, there wasn't enough of him left for that to, for that to change him. Like, and I, I, I kind of, that seems a little bit weird. Like, it, I don't want to make him sound like an irredeemable character, but to some extent, you know, he kind of is, you know, he kind of, he, he was like that yeah. badly broken by the whole thing. So, and that's why I was also really proud of that musical playlist I put together for him. I feel like that I found some, Oh yeah. There was some music that I think really expressed some unspoken things about Aiden's psychology. Uh, and plus, like, the general mm -hmm. attitude, I think, of the, the playlist captured the emotional energy of Aiden. But, yeah. yeah, definitely. So that's a bit of a tangent. That's all free. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. Uh, no, that's what this is for, I suppose. Um, but, yeah, no. I mean, some of this is first time hearing for me, too. So no. <laughs> don't worry. Um, yeah, no. Uh, you did excellent on, on making... I guess making Aiden the character that has, like you said, lost mm -hmm. everything. Um, and even when he found something that he may have been looking for, um, it didn't. Yeah, like uh, it almost help as much. It, as... It, it almost seems cruel <laughs> to say, but it was almost it wasn't enough. Right? It wasn't yeah, enough. Like it exactly. wasn't enough to have a part of that back. Like he just. In his mind, you know, he just needed, he he needed the violence. He he, mm -hmm. you know, to a certain extent, he's, he he he's... loves it. You mm -hmm. know, he loves that. Yeah. And he he just he needs that. Even if he get, has the chance to get a part of his old self back, he almost doesn't mm -hmm. want to. You know, and that's kind of I think that's the darkest <laughs> part about it. Right. He doesn't. He doesn't want the. He doesn't want to go back to maybe his old life mm. and he wants to embrace this new killer yeah. <laughs> killer instinct <laughs> yeah, so <to> <laughs> i guess to be free um so uh i guess i kind of when uh we'll ask the your favorite npc in a mm -hmm. second um i am going to alert that uh this will be i guess spoiler so if you don't want mm -hmm. spoiler don't listen yeah um <laughs> skip ahead um but uh in there's a scene that meant a lot to me uh as being i guess being aiden's daughter um playing her um the scene was uh where they were what were they it was before they went to in was it indiana where they or uh, where they uh, stormed the thing to find Simmons. Oh, yeah, yeah, before the raid on the Manifold facility. Um, yeah, I think that might have been somewhere in Indiana. I'm fairly certain. Okay. Yeah. So, <laughs> anyway, after storming the facility and, you know, killing Simmons <laughs> for the 80th <laughs> time, <laughs> darn thing, didn't want to die. <laughs> um uh, the scene where they're standing, you know, after the battle and, you know, d d d helicopters are coming in and I guess where we we kind of said goodbye to Aiden. Mm -hmm. um, do, how do you think, because in my mind, Aiden's already dead, but if not. How do you think Aiden will react to finding out Archaea is actually dead now? Mm. Well, I mean, I guess hypothetic, hypothetically, speaking, <laughs> hypothetically speaking, hypothetically yes. speaking, uh, 
I mean, he would probably just be more broken. <laughs> you know, it almost feels right. like it's hard You're to imagine he, get, he could get any worse. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I guess yeah. that's the answer. <laughs> I guess that's all there is <laughs> to it. For. Um, yeah, no, I just wanted to, you know, touch on that a little bit because now that RK is, you know, deceased yeah. by the hands of somebody she trusted, that's a good question. How do you think he would feel knowing... Emil did it and not somebody he hated mm, that's an excellent question yeah because he had a bit of a fondness <laughs> for Emil and for the rest of the group uh and especially since there was a conversation between Aiden and Arkea about he he asked her if she trusted right these yeah people. yeah and she said yeah and, yeah <laughs> so and, I mean yeah he would probably be very upset about that it would just feel like <laughs> you know a betrayal and right he would be i mean he, he has, he's got a one-track mind right it would just be like oh right it's another person to kill no yeah, guy on my hit yeah, list. <laughs> list yeah you're right okay so now that we've got all the eden <laughs> talk out of the way um who is your favorite npc and why you cut off a, a so bit boy. at the end there but i think you said was that your favorite npc and why oh Okay. Yeah, who's your favorite? Uh, phew, again, it's hard to pick favorites. <laughs> I love all my NPCs. Well, that's not true. Most of these NPCs are just people are just people with names that you meet once and then keep going off, right? But like because that's the thing is yeah. that's the nature of role-playing games. Not every NPC you meet was a planned NPC, right? You know, half half of these people aren't in my notes. Uh maybe not half of them. That's an exaggeration. You guys don't this group is doesn't really go off and talk to strangers too much. <laughs> you like they yeah no, they we're won't smart. they won't well like I'm prepared for that stuff if you do right if you won't decide to strike right. up talks with the bartenders it's just like that bartender would you know apparate yeah <laughs> over the over the course of that conversation yeah so but having said that it is true that there are a lot of NPCs that are just sort of thrown out there just for verisimilitude right there there's a person there uh, but yeah. then there's a lot. I guess of NPCs that are more characterized, right? That are more are more planned for. Yeah. Uh, but and right. among them, I, I you know I do have a fondness for all of them. They all kind of have their place. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Honestly, I'm I I quite like. I unexpectedly ended up liking Kelsey Ellington a lot just because I was really oh, happy yeah. about the way she was received. Because <laughs> that was that was the first time she was... I had this experience that like gm's dream about where you unintentionally create like a uh, a uh, vendor or you know some sort of just like throwaway uh -huh. npc that the players just latch on to <laughs> um right. we haven't seen her in a while i guess but like people people had seemed to have so much fun with kelsey that it ended up being contagious <laughs> and i i ended up having more fun playing her uh so because of that mm -hmm. obviously Right. Obviously, there's Aiden. Um, you know, I like I said earlier, he is one of my favorite mm -hmm. NPCs to play just because of how major he is and how, how I guess deeply rooted he is. You know, in our history. Uh, right. Yeah, you just I can't go without mentioning him. Uh, so this is I guess this is gonna end up being a list of favorites instead of single favorites. That's fine. <laughs> but then there's also uh, just pretty much a lot of these major NPCs I've really become fond of. Um, Sean Lennox is pretty mm -hmm. near and dear to my right. heart just because well originally in the early here's a small trivia fact in the early early phases <laughs> of planning for this campaign we didn't know who was going to gm and who was going to be players and so i was prepared for either possibility mm -hmm. of whether i would gm or i'd be a player i guess everyone sort of ultimately decided that i was best qualified to run this type of game so i was like yes. okay sure i'll do it um but w I was prepared to be a player character. And if I was going to be a player character, Sean Lennox was the guy I'd prepared. Uh, so, and I ended up getting to incorporate him into the campaign as a major NPC. So that was a lot of fun. Um, and yeah, I'm still, I really like that guy. He's, you know, he's an idealist. He's two dimensional <laughs> in many ways, but at the same time, like those, you know, those sort of, um, I guess it's what writers would call like a flat arc character, right? Where he doesn't have an arc, but the what's um, uh, what's great about the stories you could tell with that kind of character is that 
you know, they're so static and so idealistic that you just kind of have to put them in scenarios and watch how the rest of the world reacts to their their stubbornness. <laughs> so, uh-huh. yeah, I like I like that character. He's he's a, a very noble gentleman and a very kind of like idealized, I guess, uh, character in my opinion. But so yeah, he's lots of fun. I li- I've liked bringing him back a- to a bit more importance in this most recent arc and kind of throwing him back into the spotlight. Uh, but honestly, again, it's hard to pick favorites. I love everyone. Oh, I, I can't go without mentioning <laughs> Mr. Fox as well. Mr. Fox was an <laughs> unexpected major NPC. He did not exist at the beginning yes. of this campaign. He wasn't even an idea in my head. Just one day, once you guys got out of Raccoon City, Lauren came up to me and was like, hey, so Emil would have like this sort of contact, right? Just given his backstory. And I'm like... Yeah, sure. Yeah, he would have someone. He would know someone like that. And then I was like, "All right, now I got to think of someone like that." And that's where, <laughs> and right? that's where Mr. Fox came in. It was completely organic. And holy smokes, do I love that guy! Like, yeah, it he's works. just because I'm not sure if you know this about me. I'm, I mean, I'm a big fan of spy fiction, which is why I've really loved having Mr. G in the party because I get to explore some of that. It doesn't yeah, me. I get to explore some of that territory that I'm familiar with and that I like exploring. Right, a little bit of the the espionage intrigue a lot of the uh you know the the stealth the geopolitics things like that oh it's so much fun to me but with yeah with mr fox it was completely unexpected unplanned major npc and once i introduced him into the campaign i'm like that's it this guy's this guy's sticking around because i love that archetype i love that archetype of the spy master right of the the guy who holds all the secrets and that you know you don't know you don't right. know much about him really you don't even know his name you know it's like that I love that kind of character I absolutely I absolutely adore it so he's a uh, he was an unexpected ton of fun <laughs> but uh, I oh, yeah uh, really quick uh, yeah uh, I'm just going to say that um, after this last arc the uh, I forget what it was called, but the the Tonti right, yeah, arc, the Feliciano arc. <laughs> the Feliciano arc. Um, I actually came to love another NPC. Um, and this is gonna be really weird because I played somebody that would have slit his throat with her with mm-hmm. a chance, but um, uh, no, I have come to have a big love for Walker. Okay, yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, think, I think you're the first person um, who's made mention of that. Yeah. N- well, that scene between Chauncey and Walker with the mm-hmm. hologram. You know, it was on a TV screen guess, is like what it was. Yeah, it was like a monitor. A TV yeah, that was on the wall. Yeah. Um, He's Skyping into you guys. Just... <laughs> <laughs> He's Skyping. Um, no, I, that, that, I guess that was really our first other than the prologue kind of thing that you did at the beginning Mm -hmm. yeah that teaser um, trailer was the first time we really got to well i wasn't there but (laughs) i don't think i think i was working at the time but um but that was the first time that we actually got to see yeah and and hear that's true so that that was, was huge. Like, like that was meant. I'm glad. I'm glad. You, I'm oh, yeah. glad yeah, that stuck with you because that was meant to be a big scene. Like that was the the revelation of this sort of big bad evil guy that yeah. I've been teasing since since before the first episode. The yeah. Beginning. Yeah. So yeah, that was. Yeah, I'm glad. I'm glad that kind of stuck with you because that was meant to be like a kind of impactful and important scene. And man, that scene was fascinating. I loved the way it played out. That was some fascinating dialogue. I thought. You know, between him and between the party. And my favorite line was from Chauncey, "You pick the time, and I'll be there." <laughs> oh yeah, that's Chauncey for you. That's great. Now, uh, see, I, I, oh, I was just uh, gonna continue because so. I was, I was saying, you know, like I said, it's hard uh-huh. to pick favorites, and so I did kind of give a list of like all my favorite NPCs there. But yep. if I had to pick a definitive favorite. NPC in this campaign. There is one. Okay. And yeah, that would probably be Walker. Um, oh. And I can't entirely <laughs> express why yet. Because nope. you guys hardly know anything about him. <laughs> yeah, I know nothing. And I don't <laughs> but um, yeah, that, that, that character excited. is very special to me. Uh, because 
you know, like I said, he I've had all this time where since the beginning of the campaign, which it's crazy to think about this campaign, you know, is just like four months away from being two years old, that I've had Aww. all this time <laughs> to develop this character, right? Like, I, I, I conceived mm -hmm. him before the campaign even began, and I teased him in that original teaser trailer, and his name pops up from, you know, even the first arc as early as that. Uh, yeah. You know, he, I've had all this time to kind of build up the excitement and the mys mystique around this character, but at the same time, in the background, I'm going like, okay, yeah, I can't <laughs> hype this guy up and have him just be a cardboard cutout when you guys finally get to him. So, right. I've spent so much time just trying to break this character, as in, like, trying to break him down in my head, trying to figure out what makes this guy tick, who is he, and honestly, I've really ended up making a character that I very personally identify with, which I guess is kind of weird to say of the villain of this campaign, but yeah, like, I... I <clears throat> He he's ended up being very interesting, at least the way he's formed in my head, and I can't wait to see what how that plays out, you know, and what it's like when you guys start interacting with him more, and uh, you know as time goes on. So, yeah, honestly, yeah, that character that character is particularly special to me. Uh, but I love again, I love all my major NPCs; they're all great. <laughs> I'm back. <laughs> okay well there you are How's you were talking about walker there, so like, that's fine <laughs> yeah. um no i mean even from that scene i'm like oh <laughs> i i feel like walker is kind of like um our wesker <laughs> um yeah yeah in a sense and i well because like wesker is just that archetype of overarching villain right it's just like who's the the big bad that all the stories are building towards, um, and you know that's a common that's a common archetype in a lot of fiction. So yeah, I didn't want to. I very deliberately from the outset of this campaign didn't want to use Wesker very much, right? Because I feel like that's so much the territory of the games, and I want to make this distinct from that. Uh, you know, obviously, Wesker still has a big impact in this campaign, but you guys don't really. I don't really want to have him as an element that you guys can interact with. You know what I mean? And so I was like, but I want to have, I still like that element, though, of somebody who's just this massive threat to the Resident Evil universe. And so I really needed to make someone who's on that same level as Wesker, right? Who you could kind of look at and be like, yeah, this guy is a huge, you know, world-threatening problem. So, Yeah. And of course, yeah, there's a lot of inspiration that I guess goes into that. Like for me in particular, right, I come from a heavy comic book background. I love uh, comics, especially Marvel comics I grew up with. Um, and, you know, big overarching villains is also a common thing in comic books, right? You got like Thanos is one of my favorite Marvel characters. And I, I love how they treated him in the MCU and the Marvel films because they I think they really did justice to that sort of big overarching villain hype, you know, they built him up properly over a long period of time. And then when they finally unveiled him, he was just amazing. Uh, very well executed. So I hope to, I hope to execute my overarching villain with similar levels of success, but we'll see. So, uh, last question of the day. How does it feel to run a successful, uh, tabletop rpg game with your friends and just knowing that it means so much to us as players oh well i don't i don't know if i could call it a uh, success per se i mean i guess it depends on how you i guess define success but i feel like that's not for me to say whether it is or not and that's for the players and for the the audience uh but I don't know. It, it feels, I mean, it feels good. I feel like it's been a good first campaign experience. And I feel, again, just so fortunate because I, again, I hear all these horror stories. I listen to a lot of GMs, right? Because, like, that's part of the way that I learn, right, is listen to people who have done it before. What are their experiences like? What can I learn from them before I go into it? Uh, and then, of course, there's only so much you can learn before you do it yourself. And then there's a lot you have to learn just by being behind the screen. But... 
Yeah, I, I hear a lot of horror stories, and I feel like I've been really fortunate with the players I, I've gotten to have overall a pleasant experience. I mean, obviously, we have our share of, you know, behind-the-scenes drama. Some things don't go over well with all the players. Some things, you know, sometimes there's interplayer conflict, and that's I, apparently all very common and expected to happen over the course of a long-form campaign. But overall, like, it feels like there's been more good than bad, uh, and... I think that's kind of the most that I could ask for 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 my for my first time trying something like this. So, and you know, you you the way you worded it there, saying is like, how's it feel to run something that's you know for your friends that is you know doing this well? That's part of the crazy thing about it. I think is that like some of the people in this group weren't even my friends when we started out, right? I didn't I didn't know Mel like Melkaya. I didn't know him at all. Uh, I met him. Yeah, you you were like, hey, I have a friend who might be interested in this. Are you open to having more players? And I'm like, the more the merrier as far as I'm concerned with RPGs. Uh, yeah, if we could expand our party, I, I would like to. Uh, and so you, you, know, you put him in touch with me. And then I remember talking to him. I, I think I had like one, at least one meeting with him, like one-on-one -on -one at least speaking to him before the campaign started and then plenty more messaging. But... Uh, you know, I remember speaking to him, and we I felt like we just sort of, you know, kind of hit it off, you know what I mean? Like, we, we weren't really, like, we seemed very compatible right from the get-go, at least more than, you know, for me, like, I'm a pretty socially awkward person, so, uh, you know, I, I, I worry about these sort of things. It's just, like, when meeting new people, it could be a little weird. Uh, but no, like, he was, I guess he's, he's, he's our kind of people, is the way I, I saw it. Like, I was like, this is... This is somebody who speaks my language and who I could get along with. Um, and so even before we started playing, I already knew it was like, okay, this is looking, yeah, this is shaping up. This, I like, I like this group. And then Doc, I'd known because he worked with us on the Denneth Chronicle, which uh, was this big Minecraft Machinima web series that I directed and wrote and produced over the course of two years. You can find all the episodes on YouTube, on our, on our YouTube channel, uh, but yeah, Doc worked with us on that. That's where I met him. And he was a huge help on that. Uh, he, you know, he often, <laughs> he's good at self-deprecating humor. And, you know, he often says he was just a professional button pusher for that production. But, you know, he was so much more than that. He was, he was invaluable, really. Like, there was, there was a lot of people that were invaluable on that production in general because we were running with an entire volunteer cast and crew. But Doc was, like, really faithful throughout the whole process and he helped us like whenever we needed anything if you if we asked him he was he was there uh so you know obviously we knew him from that and after that a bit we started hanging out with him a little bit more you know here and there i think lauren spent more time with him than i did but then when he got interested in this campaign i feel like this campaign has really been what snowballed my relationship with him into something that I would legitimately consider a uh, friendship. And I feel like, I feel like he's really, I don't want to say like we're really close. Cause I don't know if he would feel similarly, but I don't really generally have a whole lot of close friends. So, you know, Doc's uh, pretty much as uh, almost as close as it gets, you know, with, uh, uh with how much I've, you know, interacted with him and how good of a friend I would consider him. Uh, so yeah, like the, the, I feel like Mel and Doc and, you know, were this was, the, the, those were people again, Mel, I didn't know at all until this. And then Doc, I, I knew somewhat, but still it was this campaign. I feel that brought us closer together as friends. And then with you, you know, I'd done that role play with you and we were sort of, you know, hitting off a bit of a friendship there, but yeah, this really, I guess this gave, this gave us an excuse, I guess, to hang out more regularly, which naturally brings people closer together. Um, and then, of course, Lauren is just, you know, I guess people often say we're joined at the hip, and I guess that's kind of true. We're, 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 you know, we're, we're siblings, but Lauren's also just the closest friend I've ever had. So, yeah, it's just it's such a phenomenal cast, and... It's been a genuine pleasure to be able to run this for you guys, and it's even it's just the biggest pleasure of it is the fact that you guys enjoy it at all. The fact that you guys were willing to continue on it for as long as we have, and you know, indulge my 
<laughs> you know, uh, spotty storytelling, which varies in quality, I think, throughout the whole campaign. But, you know, the fact that you guys have engaged with it this much and after, again, coming up on nearly two years are still playing it uh, is that's that's the biggest surprise. And I guess the biggest pleasure of this experience for me is the fact that, you know, I don't have to twist your arms, you know, so to speak, in order to get you to play it. And if I do, then I think, you know, we would probably let the campaign die off naturally if it ever comes to that point. Because I don't want to force anybody to play my game, right? I, I, and from what I understand, you know, that happens sometimes. Sometimes, you know, campaigns just peter off. People lose interest. And, you know, that's... And as much as that, that hurts to consider that that could happen, you know, if it does happen, then I... I, I I would have to I would have to be okay with it because it's only for you guys that I'm that I'm running this. Um so yeah, I guess that's kind of my experience on it. And then even amongst our guests, I I feel like we've had some some good guests too. Uh you know, uh Troy I I guess I kind of got to know him through The Forgiven, which was a campaign that you you ran at first, then you transferred it over to Lauren and then Lauren ran pretty much most of it. Uh and, like, by the end of that campaign, like, my character, who was originally supposed to be a guest, ended up being a bit of a mainstay. And then Troy's character was, like, the only one. Our two characters were the last people standing by the end of that. And the last few sessions were just his character and my character. And I feel like that was a strong bonding experience for us, was Lauren pretty much just running that as a two-person campaign for him and me. So, um... Yeah, and so bringing him into this campaign obviously was was a no brainer. And then having uh, Ilo as well was somebody I completely did not know at all before this, and she's wonderful. Um, you know, a bit a bit newer to tabletop games, you know, and a bit less experienced in that in the role playing regard, but still she she's been she's been amazing, and I've got to watch her grow a lot as a as a player. And then, the, of course, that's to say nothing of all the art and production value that she has contributed to the show, which just continually blows my mind. Oh, she's so, she's so good, and she has, she has a genuine talent, and she's so easy to work with for the art process. I don't know if that's something I talk about enough, but whenever I come to her with an idea, she's just, she's on it. She's there, and she's like, no problem. She takes notes super well uh, when I when I have notes to give on her art. You know, as like, okay, and she's just, she's just the good person to collaborate with on those, on those artworks. Because like, I'm not, I I could say confidently, I'm not gifted in that way. Um, You know, I guess illustration wise, Lauren was probably, you know, the most artistic person out of our family. Uh, But Ilo, I think is just like on another level. I've never really had (laughs) somebody that I could call a friend that's that good at art and and while, you know, she's, she's a great friend and really cool to hang out with, but I guess from a purely utility perspective, it's really cool to have somebody like that in the group who could contribute that that artwork and that production value that just makes the world just pop that much more. When we could have something, where I could have something to show you guys that it's just like, this is what you see, you know? And I, I love, yeah, like, I love that visual element, and she just she just elevates that visual element of the campaign so much more. So, and yeah, having not known her before this campaign at all, like, she was just like, because you introduced me to Mel, and then Mel introduced me to Ilo, and so it's like this whole telephone game of getting to know new people, uh, you know, and that took some doing at first, that took some organizing, we got to the Raccoon City arc, and I was like, okay, there's plenty, obviously, this is Raccoon City, so there's obviously plenty of opportunity for new guests, new characters to be introduced and I was like, hey, Mel, do you know anybody? He was like, oh, I have this friend Ilo who might be interested. I was like, all right, put us in touch. And there was a lot of, you know, communication back and forth eventually to make that happen. But yeah, when it finally happened, I'm glad she really took to it and that she has stuck with this campaign for so long, you know, and seeing her get into it has been has been pretty awesome. So yeah, I, I love this whole cast. Um, I honestly, honestly, as an artist, as a storyteller, I don't know how I it took me this long to discover tabletop role-playing games because getting into this campaign has been really everything I've wanted out of a gaming experience. It combines just so many different things that I love. And furthermore, I think 
for creative people, I think there is generally nothing that brings people together quicker <laughs> than a than a uh, uh, RPG campaign. I honestly think that's the case. You cannot. There is no other medium for storytelling that I think could bring creative people together as friends faster than than RPGs can. And yeah, it's been. I could go on and on rambling in answer to this question because it's just been. Uh, it's been a true joy. I've been I've been blessed to have the privilege of running this campaign for all of you, and hopefully get to see it through to its end. Because, like I said, I have a lot of content known. I've outlined, you know, at the start I started with an outline of pretty much what I think the overarching campaign is going to look like. At, those plans have changed a little bit over time, stretched a little bit over time to fill more space. But I, you know, I have I have my own idea of what the definitive end of this campaign looks like. And, but I'm pretty much going as long as you guys are still willing. And if you guys are willing to go for as much as I have planned, then we'll just keep going till we reach that end that I have written in. But if not, then it may end early. Well, I don't know. But whatever the case may be, I'm following the story where it goes and I'm following you, you know, you guys where, where you want to, where where you guys kind of lead me, you know, and as far as your your interest and your engagement with the campaign. So, yeah, it's been a, a true pleasure, true pleasure. That's that's awesome. I'm glad that <laughs> glad that uh, I guess the GM and the players are <laughs> are on the same page as far as how much uh, we're enjoying and how much you enjoy. I guess telling the story, which is no big surprise, <laughs> because I know that just by again touching just a little bit on the uh, role play uh, that took place before, uh, I guess kind of the prologue <laughs> that nobody knows about. <laughs> of Are you Resident... talking about like the pilot episodes? No, I'm talking about. Well, I guess. You know, a little prologue to uh, the story oh, and to Archaea. Yeah, I like guess. the the role play. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah, right. Which we we definitely call the last reunion. But um, mm. uh, so when I say the last reunion, that's what I'm referring to. <laughs> yeah, um, that was the title of that little piece. We came up with that on the fly, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, just touching on that just a little bit. Um, I knew. From the moment that we started, well, not from the moment we started, but the moment we started talking about bringing a tabletop game to life, um, we were still in the midst of role playing. Um, mm -hmm. So I knew from that, from seeing how dedicated, even though he was busy, because <laughs> he was currently in the last. I believe the last few episodes of Edeneth production at that time. Yeah, I was. Yeah, and then that was that was mad crunch. There would be like yeah. periods where you just wouldn't hear from me for. I'm a while. just like, what what happens next? <laughs> <laughs> um, but um, I think I've I've told uh, Raph this many times. Um, this man, I will tell you just <laughs> real quick. He does not have an ego, so there is no ego to boost. But. <laughs> I have tried, <laughs> um, but um, I have told him this many times. When we were doing that, uh, when we were doing the role play, we did it on Discord, so it was post after post, <laughs> um, but <laughs> paragraph after paragraph. Um, but when he sent me the entire file of everything that he went through and put into a text document. <laughs> Thank you for that, by the way. Um, yeah. I just saw, when I got to read it from beginning to quote-unquote end, um, that the amount of dedication that he had to um, storytelling and telling a story was phenomenal. <laughs> um, and after reading from beginning to end, I realized that every day that he didn't post or he couldn't post because he was busy, I was like, 
oh god i need to know what happens next <laughs> like in a book you know you read a book and you're like i gotta stop at this chapter today and you can't read the next chapter because you're busy or whatever and it's like i need to read the next chapter <laughs> um i need to know what happens next and he kept me engaged from post to post and i have read or i have done role plays with other people that i'm just like I have to fight to write the next, <laughs> mm. I have to fight with myself to write the next paragraph or the next post. And with rap, it just came so naturally because he told a story that A, I was engaged in and B, he didn't write one, one sentence and expect me <laughs> to, you know, to post yeah. back to that. You know, he, he gave me detail and he gave me, a reason to keep writing and it and it made me feel amazing and kept me engaged so i guess what i'm trying to say is you've got me till the end <laughs> wow. um but you know i mean raf i i can't i can't say enough uh, just to end this out how mm. amazing of uh, well, first, a guest to my new show, but, um, <laughs> uh, first episode, um, but how amazing of a friend you are, um, I've, I've told you this many times in Discord, you know this, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> saying I nothing there. <laughs> <laughs> um, I can't iterate enough how great he is as a person and how great he is as a friend. I'm lucky. Um, I'm lucky to have known somebody, well, know somebody that is just incredible. Um, <laughs> and he's he's both incredibly talented as far as writing and I, I don't know how much video production you put into it, Dennis, but <laughs> I don't know who was who in that big production but uh the all of the uh, tapes that rk had in the beginning of the story raf put those all together <laughs> and mm. they were amazing well, yeah i mean yeah you wrote them and you kind of direct them. yeah directed some <laughs> of the voiceover but yeah yeah and then i had to edit them uh he after edited that. them together um as well as played in some all yeah yeah <laughs> Um, so he's multi-talented that way, but he's also, he's incredible professionally and personally, I guess is the right word. Um, always there when you need him. Not always when you want him, but when you need him, he's there. Um, and I, I guess I don't get enough time to say... How, how lucky and how blessed I am to have him in my life. Um, oh, well, that means a lot. Thank you. You're I welcome. I mean, yeah, and I'm just, I'm just glad I could, I could share that, you know, like you said, that sense of reading a book, right? And yeah. <laughs> being hooked from page to page, I'm glad I could instill that for somebody else because, you know, that's sort of what drawn me to the, uh, what's drawn me to the arts, right, is those experiences I've had for myself that are like that, you know? Absolutely. It's just, reading a book or watching a movie and being absolutely enthralled, you know, by what I'm engaging with and having this, I don't know, like this experience, this emotional connection with the material. That's, yeah, that's rare to be sure, you know, when it's, when it's like that good that you're really connecting with it. But mm -hmm. I'm, I'm glad that I can do that for others to a certain extent. Um, however selective that group may be, but I'm, I'm glad I could have some fraction of that experience uh, and, and give that to somebody with my own storytelling. So that's, that's, that's something I'll, I'll surely cherish. And it's just, you know, it's almost, you know, I guess as scripture says, it's more blessed to give than to receive. So I feel like you have, I guess, been a blessing in that I have, you you're you're somebody that i feel i can give to you know not everybody i feel like i have something for i don't feel mm -hmm. like i could be of of help or of benefit to you know most people but 
I guess what's important for me is trying to make it count for the people that I can do something for. Uh, and I guess that's that's all it kind of comes down to is I just tri I don't try to do I try to do nothing halfway, right? No half measures. That's kind of all I live <laughs> my life by is whatever I do, I try to give it my all and see where it goes from there. Well, you certainly do that. Um, nothing ever seems half. Like, you're either there or you're not. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, you've you've done good. <laughs> um, you. And I I definitely look forward to wherever wherever this campaign takes us. And um, I. I honestly just hope that we do get to see that uh, definitive end that you have planned. Um, I hope so as well. Because <laughs> I, I, you know, I, I know from experience DMing, I'm actually DMing a Resident Evil campaign right now um, with a hmm. couple of friends of mine following. Oh, really? The, following the Resident Evil um, unto uh, untold rulebook sort of. Uh, yeah, kind of. <laughs> I didn't know that, yeah. Yeah, a little bit. I mean, uh, apparently apparently Mel is running a game, yes. too, using this system. Yep. And when I learned about that, that made me, like, I don't know why. That made me so, you know, giddy. It was like, <laughs> that's cool that people Somebody... are already using this. We haven't even released it publicly yeah. yet. But yeah, even it's... within this group, you know, people are enjoying it enough to it's... run their own games with it. That's super cool. It's in beta. Yeah. Or alpha. I don't know. Is it in beta or alpha? It's in beta, yeah. Oh, okay, beta. <laughs> Playtesting phase. Yeah. So, absolutely. Um, so, I, I do that on my own, but knowing knowing a little bit of a DM's uh, perspective, I guess, or a GM, depending. Knowing, uh, knowing just a little bit of the DM uh, mindset, um, I respect you wholeheartedly on that part because... <laughs> Um, knowing mm -hmm. how much, how much work goes into it and everything, it's, it's amazing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's a lot of work. And I'm finding, apparently, it, like, the amount of work that I have to do for Resident Evil Play is not ordinary <laughs> for running an RPG campaign. Most people do not have to be creating the system and playtesting yeah. <laughs> the system and, uh, balance adjusting the system and creating every single monster, uh, stat you know, block stat block that you guys encounter and you know designing the npcs and building the the settings in the yep. world <laughs> you know as we go along obviously i have resident evil to start with the resident right. evil world to start with but it's like none of that is codified for an rpg right. <laughs> gameplay so there's a lot of transference that has to go on apparently it's not normal so i guess when resident roleplay is done i look forward to just downscaling to a proper D, &D right. campaign <laughs> and just running something that i don't have to do this much work right. for <laughs> Which I do have plans for that probably won't be live streamed. Um, just something I want to do for my Appreciate offline it. friends and things like that. But yeah, something personal, which I look forward to that. But probably not going to get into that yeah. until Resident Roleplay is on its way yeah. out. Well, I mean, you know, uh, as sad as it is, <laughs> as, as sad as <laughs> it is, it, it will eventually end. Um, yep. But... Um, all stories have an end. True. True. Um, so, I believe that's it. Um, hmm. I get... guess that went on yeah. a bit longer than expected, <laughs> yeah. but... Well, <laughs> but it was good. It was good conversation. Yeah, good conversation. I, I enjoyed um, that. Is there anything you would like to close with? Um... <laughs> I guess just, you know, thanks, thanks for this chance, you know, to, to talk a little bit more about this in a more formal setting, uh, you know, with it being that it's recorded and it's going to be shared and whatnot. Uh, I mean, I get, I think I've, I've shared some pretty conclusive thoughts about Absolutely. the campaign and all the people involved, but yeah, I mean, I guess for those who are watching, thank you very much for watching. And I hope you guys, if you don't already, uh, check out the show, Resident Role Play, or check out our channel. And our, our Twitch stream. I'm sure you'll oh, be yeah, linking all, all those links because I gave the links yeah, at the beginning. Absolutely. But uh, but yeah, we put a lot of work into it, and uh, you know, I hope I hope you guys as audience members enjoy it as much as we enjoy 
uh, playing it and and producing it. So, and that being said, we're also looking to, we do far more than just resin roleplay. You know, we released a short film actually pretty recently on P-Cubed, which was fun to uh, produce. Uh, that, that was mostly Lauren's brainchild and mostly Lauren working on it uh, <laughs> just as like a little VFX experiment. But yeah, we, we definitely have plans to do a lot more uh, just creative work of all sorts, right? We, we're, we're not looking to be one trick ponies, even though we're mostly <laughs> resin right. roleplay right now. That's yeah, yeah. We got we got lots of plans that we can't talk about yet, but <laughs> you know. So once there's news, <laughs> I will definitely get them back. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> for um, sure. But yeah, yeah thanks absolutely. thanks again for the conversation, and it's just it's always nice talking oh, to course. you and getting the chance to talk about. I, again, uh, about this campaign, you know, a little bit more deeply in this sort of formal setting is actually kind of Yeah, fun. <laughs> yeah. Hearing your, your Aiden thoughts was <laughs> uh, definitely something not even I knew. Yeah, um, yeah, but, yeah. I guess I got to drop some bombs yeah, here. <laughs> yeah. on on my life <laughs> as well as, you, as, <laughs> as the viewers' lives. <laughs> I mean, I guess it doesn't matter so much to them as it does to me because I, I, I knew Aiden long time ago <laughs> um but uh yes yeah, so i guess that'll be it um our next our uh next guest will be actually um his sibling lauren uh talking about um a That's little right. bit of about emil and his new character uh so mm -hmm. that'll be fun <laughs> Uh, the GM kind of got to talk about everybody. <laughs> uh, yeah. That's yeah. his job. Uh, but, um, <laughs> yeah, so we'll go a little bit. We did talk a lot, a little bit, a lot about a meal today, but we'll get to get a more in-depth. Uh, yeah, I look forward to hearing his perspective <laughs> on all that. Me too. Because <laughs> some of the questions that I asked Raph will also be asked to, to Lauren. So, mm. That'll be out probably next next week sometime. Um, Rafts will be uploaded on Monday. Uh, I'm gonna work on it over the weekend. <laughs> uh, I have a... or whenever you're watching this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> or listening yeah. to this, it will have been uploaded. It will have been <laughs> uploaded on Monday. Um, but I am going to work on it over the weekend and get it all set up although i have a pretty busy weekend ahead of me so it's gonna be interesting awesome um but i will see you all next time when we talk to me uh to lauren about emil and uh mr g which is gonna be interesting because <laughs> he can't say too much but he can say some um <clears throat> or whatever he feels comfortable talking about so I will see you all guys, or I will see you all next time. Uh, Raph, I hope you enjoyed your time here. And uh, oh, yeah, I will definitely awesome. talk to you on Saturday when we play. Did you give a time and day for Twitch Live? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Every 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 Saturday while uh, Story Arc is in yeah. session. All right. Yep, every all Saturday right. evening. We start try to seven. start around 7, <laughs> uh, 7 p.m. Eastern time. Keep 7 p.m. Eastern time, yeah, we try to shoot for. Uh, and usually we stay pretty close yeah. to that mark. Sometimes we start a bit earlier, yeah. but yeah. Uh, sometimes we start a bit later even. But yeah, that's that's around the time we'll be streaming it. Of course, new episode that, uh, in this forthcoming Saturday as well. Yep. And you do replay your streams, right? Uh, we don't run reruns, but we upload the VODs to YouTube the oh, following okay. Monday. So. Yeah, you could always get caught up. Oh, there. okay. I thought you were you and Lauren were talking about doing something like that with Twitch, where you played the streams over. Mm, yeah, I mean, we, uh, not necessarily for those. Oh, okay. Um, something. Well, I guess we we were we did at one oh, point okay. um, when we were streaming more more actively, but while it's just this, we uh, oh, kind of okay. discontinued That's that. Fine. <laughs> um, yeah, but it's uh. Yeah, yeah. But, but it's always on. It's always the vods are always on YouTube. Uh, the Monday mm -hmm. after. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, I will see you on Saturday and.
Goodbye, everyone. Bye. So, I want to thank you all for watching the first episode of Mirror Talk today. Um, we did have uh, Raph on to talk about Resident Roleplay and how it is to GM. We learned a lot of things about Resident Roleplay that you might have not gotten anywhere else. Um, he is a fantastic person. Again, I can't iterate enough. He's a great friend. I'm going to link on the screen. You should see cards for their channel, uh, Pacheco Projects and Productions, as well as my favorite playlist of theirs and Resident Roleplay. So you can go to their channel and support them because they are amazing people. And by them, I mean all the Pachecos are amazing. Um, so go visit them, go support them. Um, and again, I want to thank you for, of course, supporting me. And 